You may have tried a green laser. You may have even tried a red laser. But have you tried the blue-violet laser? These lasers have become more available on the market in large part due to the popularity of the blue-ray technology, making them more mass-produced. As shown in Arbor Scientific's popular spectrum chart, red lasers have a wavelength of between 622 and 770 nanometers. Green can be between 492 and 577. And the violet wavelengths fall between 390 and 455 nanometers. These lasers shown here have specific wavelengths of 650 for the red, 532 for the green, and 405 for the violet. As you can see, without the violet, you are missing a large part of the spectrum. As shown here, one thing you can do is point each of them through a diffraction grating and talk to the students about where the wavelengths of each ends up. Another activity involves water bottles. With the violet laser, the 405 nanometers is getting very close to ultraviolet, and as it turns out, it produces fluorescence. In basic terms, fluorescence occurs when the light is absorbed into a material, which then emits it in most cases with a longer wavelength than what was absorbed. The electrons in the material excited a higher level, and as, as, as they return to the ground state, they emit the photons of light that produce the glowing effect. Violet lasers tend to fluoresce with many more materials than the green laser. Shine it through a water bottle and not much happens, but shine it through our magic water and watch it glow. The magic water is tonic water, which is typically shown to fluoresce in ultraviolet light, but actually fluoresces quite nicely at 405 nanometers. Last, we'll show you something you might want to say for your grand finale. Phosphorescence is often described in simple terms as related to fluorescence, but longer lasting due to forbidden energy states that occur very slowly in certain materials. So as you can imagine, the violet laser is great at demonstrating this property as well with the right material. Shine it on something with glow-in-the-dark properties, such as a sheet of Arbor Scientific's phosphor glow paper. We are seeing the same characteristics of excited electrons that we saw in fluorescence, only with phosphorescence it takes longer for the material to transition back to its ground state, and therefore you see it longer with those types of materials. Try it with a green laser and not much happens. So finally, you can cost effectively provide a full range of lasers in your wavelength demonstrations to your students. Providing the range of lasers can make a deeper impact on their understanding of different wavelengths and their properties. And as always, please practice good safety and only purchase lasers with the property safety and quality control standards in place.